No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And I got my man, Violent J, in the building once again. I know. They're stunned. I'd be too. Take him in in all his glory. I'm in this bitch. This is my Halloween costume on my pimp cup. Pop it out. Look at me like a chalice. What inspired you to get so fresh today? You. What do you oh, mean? Oh, I like that answer. For real. That's the real deal. Hell this is yeah. no jumper, man. I had to get fresh to death. Music to my ears. Hell yeah, man. This is this is fun, man. I, I appreciate that time together, man. Oh, I appreciate that. This is what, our third time? Yeah. Amazing. Fucking awesome, man. You're solo this time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very rare. Yeah. It's, it, is, it is very, very rare. You know what I mean? Mm. But but it, it not, in our world, it makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? Right. Because uh, he needed a break, you know, and, and he took it, you know, for the holidays. He's probably till after the holidays, you know what I mean? Okay. That's cool, though. I mean, shit, we went fucking two and a half years on this last, no, two years on this last album. Going hard, man. Right. Yeah, so... What what is the actual state of the change that is taking place within the group right now? You guys are slowing down a bit on the touring and whatnot. Like, how, how do you perceive this change? Well, you know, man, last year, um, no, it was this year, I think actually. Fuck yeah, I guess it was this year. Um, I fucking we come out of the house and I walk to my studio. My studio is where the it was once a pole barn there, so it's just right in my front yard. Okay. But by the time I get to the studio, I'd be winded, you know, mm. like, damn, why am I so fucking? I'm thinking. Am I really this out of shape because of COVID? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, because um, you did, you caught it at one point. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. But you know, just being sitting on your ass all day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Not going out, not doing anything. You know, with the whole fucking uh, quarantine thing. You know, just locked in the house. You know, I thought I was getting weaker, but but then finally, you know, I realized something was wrong. And my brother took me to the hospital, and they did like a, a ultrasound thing. You know, looked at my heart, and uh, they told me to go home, get in bed, wait for the in the morning because all the doctors were tied up with COVID and everything. Mm. And then the first thing in the morning, they were like, you need to go to the uh, emergency ward. And I went there and I had fucking heart failure. Wow. Fucking crazy. That's a crazy ass word too. Heart failure. What the fuck? I feel like I'm going to kick over and die. You know what I'm saying? For somebody who's <laughs> been living like they were a superhero for so long. That's right. To then finally hear that and be like, ah, oh, fuck. It's just terrifying sounding, you know. But anyway, it's not it's not as you know bad as it sounds at all, you know. What, what happened is, you know, uh, when your heart be it's in locked into the rhythm you know that's how you live your life but my my heart was just jumping all over the place you know what i mean but on the mic i was always on par with the rhythm and on point you know what i'm saying like a true old school rapper doesn't want to hear nothing right. about his skills on the mic but yeah so so um you know basically you know losing my breath mad hard you know it's not a good idea you know what i mean it's, it's, it, and so you know they told me not to lift nothing really heavy and just you know to dial it down some, dial it down some, you know. My, so that, that's where touring went. You one know? thing that, that kind of strikes me is like, you guys have been on the road for like 30 years, damn near. And then finally, something happens that basically keeps you home for like a year and a half or however long. Right. And then fucking, as a result, it's almost like the touring was what was keeping you going right but then like you slow down for a little be, yeah. bit and then it's sort of like weirdly this issue pops up D like during the pandemic did you sort of do you think you got into worse health or worse shape or or no i thought everybody did you know we, <laughs> i did for we, sure yeah. we were all just locked in the house you know i mean i guess so you know i just was probably eating bad food i, I know how to cook you know i've been single for a while you know what i mean right and you know but just getting by you know but yeah the heart failure was scary but it don't make sense to tour like that anymore it doesn't mm. make sense to play you know six nights a week Week, you know what I mean? Right. So we're doing a farewell tour next year, but uh, we're only going to play three shows a week. Okay. You know, I'll keep it slow so the old motherfucking ticket don't fucking kick over, you know what I mean? And, and was that basically what they told you, is that going out and, and exerting yourself and doing these performances for a couple hours where you're screaming and running back and forth, that that was going to take a very, very significant toll on you? You know, they didn't really say that. They just said, you know, losing your breath to a, to a high uh, you know, like really losing your breath, you know, right. isn't a good idea. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, they were clear about that, you know. But um, I, I know how to pace myself on stage now, you know what I mean? Especially mm. with that in the back of your mind, you know what I mean? Right. But, you know, I just want everybody to know, man, for real, I feel fucking fantastic, man. I feel like that's fucking strong as a fucking Rwanda mountain gorilla, for real. Like, I'm fucking <laughs> powerful. Right. For real. Like, I feel, I'm in a high spot in my life, you know? Mm. Like, things are going great, man. And all that heart failure shit, you know, it's it's embarrassing to have to take a step back for, right. for anybody, you know what I'm saying? It's really hard to take a step back like that. I mean, it's kind of easy for people to now run with that narrative of like, oh, they stopped touring because of this, so he must be in terrible 
condition. No, no, right. we're still playing once a month. Mm. You know, it's going to be like a, a we're like almost a lottery. We don't know where we're going, but each month we're we're doing one show. You know, right. And it's, so we told everybody, you know, eventually we'll be, you know, we'll play your town sometime. You know what I mean? And you know, we got the uh, farewell tour next year. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I I could still tour at that pace. It just don't make a sense make much sense to risk it like that. You know mm. what I mean? So just yeah, it's embarrassing to have to you know take a step back. But you know what? We all do. We, right. you know what I'm saying nobody gets to escape that step back, you know. How compare your feelings before going on tour now versus your feelings uh, uh, going on tour when you were, you know, 30 or in your late 20s or something like that? Like, are you still as excited about it? Is there a certain extent to which you're like, I've got enough money, I can kind of chill. Maybe I shouldn't be torturing myself like this. You know, honestly, you know, playing the show, stepping on a stage and performing is, you know priceless experience you know what i mean but also um you know it is uh it's definitely something that um can be controlled in to a certain degree you know what i'm saying like like just swerved down and took him down a couple of notches you know and i can i can do that and i've done it you know mm. but i we, i love performing performing is like an ecstasy you know what i mean it still gives you that feeling yeah, yeah absolutely but the rest of touring, mm. you know what I'm saying? The rest of the whole day. Traveling. Fuck, man. Mm. I got so played out on it. I don't mind not touring no more. Right. I mean, fuck, I was played out on doing tour. Plus, I don't like doing the same show every night. Mm. You know what I mean? I want to switch it up. So we start switching it up, you know? And by the time we get to the end of the tour, it's a whole, totally different show, you know? It's just like, it just gets played out doing the same thing every night. You know what I mean? But uh, the way we're doing it now is so dope, man. Mm. Like, honestly... Like do, doing the show once a month and still having our, our uh, annual events like Juggalo Weekend, Gathering of the Juggalos, Holla Wicked, right. Big Baller Christmas Party, you know, um, still having all our events like that, you know, also. So, so there's a gang of concerts in, in, within the year, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, like at a certain point, doing the, the real nonstop touring your ass off thing is just not going to agree with being a bit older right that's more we, of a young man's game it is but we don't need to you mm. know what i'm saying we don't need to pound the, the pavement like that you know what i'm saying right. like we did it we did that shit man we've been 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 done that you mm. know honestly man fucking that's the one that's a good thing with being old school legendary status you know yeah. what i'm saying is how people a lot of people take it and that's very fucking a very fucking you know appreciated it's like it's like a fucking honor to hear that from somebody you know it's right. an honor to entertain them you know what i'm saying mm. very blessed life are, are there other things that you aspire to do in your life in terms of you know media other things outside of this and music like what, what what are the things that really come to mind when you think about the other things that give you joy and that you'd like to put a lot of time and effort into now that you have a bit more man that's funny you asked that man um you know Okay, check this out. I had a problem with pain pills. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? I like I started I started taking them more than I needed them. You know. And this was when? This was just like last shit, six years on, okay. on and off. You know what I mean? But um, when I when I would come off them, you know, I didn't crave them like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was very very blessed. Same thing with drinking. Mm. We go on tour and fucking pound them every night. You know what I mean? Right. And then come home and when I'm at home with my kids. I don't even fucking think about drinking. It doesn't even enter my mind, you mm -hmm. know? I've been very, very fortunate in that sense, you know? Right. But um, anyway, yeah, so, so the, uh, you know, I, the pain pills, what happened was I, I uh, took the Suboxone, which is, you know, if you've been on pain pills for a while, you can, you can su surpass, by bypass the withdrawal if you take Suboxone. Right. You know what I mean? Which every time I've come off the pain pills, I just took Suboxone and I was good, you know? Okay. But this time... I fucking tried to, because you got to put it under your tongue, and it's all nasty as fuck. I tried to avoid the taste, so I chewed it up with a bunch of Starburst and just swallowed it, you know? Uh -huh. And that don't work. So I'm in the hotel, and I start fucking going through withdrawal, you know what I'm saying? My girlfriend gets all scared. Next thing you know, I'm at Cedar Cyanide. Then this guy named Alex comes get me from this place called The Red Door, and uh, he takes me to another facility for like 11 days. Then he took me to The Red Door, where I'm at now. And, you know, this whole experience, man, i never been through any change like this since I went camping as a fucking 13-year-old, you uh -huh. know what I mean, in my life. This is like such a departure from my regular life. I've been there three weeks now, you know, and um, it's very fucking inspiring, bro. Like, really? Yeah, man, fuck yeah. You know, very, very inspiring. You know, Shaggy's had drinking problems his whole life. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's no secret, you know. And the times he's been to rehab and going to, through this experience it's like, and this is your first time, yeah, ever, yeah, ever, you know. And I'm thinking, 
fuck, man, what if we opened up some sort of, you know, recovery facility? You know what I mean? Especially in Detroit, man. Like, every time, you, if you're going to go to Wichita, if you're going to go to, uh, what do you call it, rehab, you know, you got to fly out somewhere. If right. you live in Detroit, there's nothing. There ain't shit. You got to fly out to Phoenix or Florida or fucking California, you know. But in Michigan, there ain't shit. So what if we put something up, you know, and, and did something like that? Because, you know, even though essentially what they're selling is care at, at a rehab center, they're selling care. But... Just like I get wrapped up in my work, people there can get super wrapped up in their work, and the care is real. Mm. Get what I'm saying? And that's awesome. Definitely, yeah. Do you? Uh, wh- what have you gotten out of that experience of, of being in rehab outside of just like obviously separating yourself from the drugs? But like, has there been anything in particular that you've had time to sort of reflect on, or, or wh- what's been special about that experience? It's just really strange, man. Because you know, like I said, I've been, I've been single for a long time. You know, I recently met somebody. Everything's off the hook there. Mm. You know, I feel fucking great. We're not touring no more. You know what I mean? I used to fucking dread touring sometimes. You know what I mean? Cause mm. Just because of everything else besides the show itself. You right. Know? But, um, yeah, man, I- I'm on, like, a-, a high plane in my life. Like, I'm doing really good. Right. Like, I'm really happy. I feel great. I'm very, very happy in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I've been having a lot of these conversations with people, uh, which is kind of like, what comes after the years and years of grinding. Like once you've really made something for yourself, there's kind of like a moment where you start to think like, should I maybe take time, more time to appreciate life now? Should I maybe kind of restructure my life so that I can be a little bit more at peace, et cetera? Because I feel like a lot of people, like you in particular with the touring and shit, I mean, it's like, you're doing something you're passionate about. You're doing something artistic, creative. It's fulfilling you. You're, you're speaking to these people, but then at the same time, it's, it's tearing you apart physically just being on the road like that. And, yeah. Yeah. We would go, both of us would go until we're throwing up. Like, like there, there'll be so many times in the show where we're both back there throwing up at the same time. You wow. know what I mean? Like, like in unison. But, but man, we, we would go until you're just on the tip of fucking passing out and stay at that range. Do the whole show, you know what I mean? Wow. But you know, you can't do that forever, man. That's life, man. Right. And if anybody don't know that, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad thing though. Like I never thought at at my age I would be. I never thought my conversation with a girl on the phone at my age now would be the same fucking conversation I had when I was 17. You think it's the same conversation? I'm trying to get some netting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nothing's changed. Right. It's the same fucking, and it's just as cool. At my, at my, I'm 40 fucking nine, and it's still fun trying to get some netting. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. It's awesome, man. Life is good, man. Just, I feel so bad for people that, you know, can't get it together because bottom line is, man, you're the only one piloting this vessel we've been given. You're the only motherfucker that's going to jump in you and fix you right so fucking what are you waiting on you know what i mean yeah if if you know if drugs is something that's fucking you up i don't give a fuck about tom dick or harry it fucks you up so steer from that you know yeah navigate your fucking vessel or fuck fuck away from that shit you know what i mean yeah man you know and and the only thing i don't like about about the re, re, the more conventional recovery mm. brother is it's, it's all about surrendering mm. everybody's like my name's Dale, and I'm an alcoholic or uh, an addict, you know? And it's like, I feel like standing up saying, my name's Joe, and I'm not a motherfucking addict. Mm. That was then, this is now. Fuck that shit. Right. It's been deleted. You know, that's how I feel, 100%. And I don't like the approach. It's, it's so bad, sorry and, and surrendering. Yeah. And I'm thinking, pimp that shit. Boss up. Right. You're you. Then fuck regret. What is regret? Right. What the fuck is regret? What are you regretting? You're the judge and jury of you. Mm. Let you off the hook every motherfucking time. But I feel like they have to sort of institute that mentality because it's like if you're an alcoholic, just to keep the metaphor simple or whatever, if you're an alcoholic, it's like you never really get to stop being an alcoholic in a, in a sense. Like you can stop drinking alcohol for 10 years, but you're still kind of at risk when you go into a bar or you go to a setting where somebody's no pressuring you to drink. And to an extent, like... I feel very much the same way that you do because I feel like I just have a certain force of personality where there's been things I did coke for years and years and years and then one day I just stopped yeah. and I never thought about it again you know never even considered it that's just kind of how I am if I, me too. If, if I decide something's having a net negative effect on my life it's pretty easy for me to walk away then again though I have a lot of reason to walk away I think a lot of people struggle with that because they don't really have something that 
they're excited about. Like me or you, we get to be passionate about what we're doing day to day. I feel like it's so much harder to stop being an addict when you are also dealing with the crushing reality of your life being overall pretty depressing. Right, but it is overwhelming and everything, but somewhere in all that fucking terror and somewhere in that tsunami or fucking hurricane is your voice saying, you know it's your fault. Mm. Quit fucking with the shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's time. That voice is still there in the middle of that cyclone. Mm. You know what I mean? It's saying, just leave it, motherfucker. Be smart. This right. is fucked up. You're telling yourself that all the time. Until you do something... What do you, I mean, you're you. It's not good for you. Right. You know, fuck what they're doing on the commercials. You know, mm. that this is you. That's you. That doesn't work with you. Fuck it. Delete it. Mm. If you leave an option, you're going to fail. There is no option. Failure is not, a, I mean, failure is not an option. Right. You know, there is no option. That's it. Plain and simple. Get over it. You know, I, I was addicted to food for years. Mm. I said, fuck food, man. You know, <laughs> and deleted it. And fuck, man. And now it's easy for you to eat healthy because I feel like food is also an interesting metaphor because comparatively, it's pretty easy to just stop drinking alcohol and to just be hardcore about that. But with food, it's like, yeah, you could order, you could eat a salad every fucking day, but there's going to be a moment where you right. got to eat something worse. You and have and to it's, eat. it's easy to eat a little bit worse. You know, like I, I've had a bunch of girlfriends over the years that had eating disorders and it's fucking, that's super hard to get off of because you have to eat. Man, one day I said, man, fuck. Food, fuck eating. <laughs> you know, I didn't eat until I got dizzy or my stomach was really hurting. And you know why your stomach hurts when you don't eat? That's fat burning. That shit hurts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. I would not recommend starving yourself to no, pass out for the no. average person trying to lose weight for the man, record. Man, but I'm saying everybody can do it, man. It's in you. I mean, right. it happens all the time, you know. Like like when, like when you said you, that stuff doesn't bother you, walk right away from it, you mm. know. That's because you're the shit, bro. <laughs> for real. Be the shit, right? Yeah. Be the shit. Be the shit. That's the best advice you can say. And the laws of attraction are true. You know, the uh, powers of positive thinking, the secret. Mm. That shit is real. I'm going to give you guys credit for something that I doubt you've heard in the past. Okay. Now, kind of normal, not only in hip-hop, but in the outside world as well, to, to discuss your mental state, to okay. discuss your yeah. mental health. And I know this. I feel like you guys were pretty early on that. You guys were, were very early on sort of like admitting that you were flawed, speaking about yourself being flawed, really going out of your way to make an effort to speak to people who are blatantly, uh, you know, people dealing with shit and a lot of times it was mental illness. Is that kind of interesting to you to see that the, the world has sort of come around to that mentality in a way? I was just saying earlier, you know, before you got here, man, I love the world today. The world mm. is a great place today. Like, like, man, the, today's generation is the shit, man. I have so much faith in today's generation, bro. You know what I mean? They taught us to stop fucking tripping on gays. Mm. You know, stop being <laughs> racism. Stop, they, they, won't, they won't have bullies today. Right. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. career-long bullies, you know? These motherfuckers were bullies until they were dead in a casket, you know? But you can't do that no more. People get ready to be faced like, why are you acting like that, man? Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they won't have it. Right. And that's, I, I'm just proud, you know? Like, like I, I just, the way I look at it, Trump was like one last stand of the old guard. You know mm. what I'm saying? One last, uh, you know, and yeah. that was their one last stand, and then they're dying off right now, you know, so. Right. Um, you don't mind uh, saying things about Trump, though? It doesn't bother you that some percentage of your audience is not going to appreciate that? No, man, everybody's got their own. I'm not tripping on anybody if you vote for Trump. Mm. Man, that's what life's about. We talk about things. I ain't tripping on nobody that's anybody's different, you know? Right. I hope nobody's tripping on me. I'm just being me. Right. Like, don't be mad at me for being me. I'm not mad at you, you know? Cool. I feel you. There's, there's just, like, such an incentive for artists these days to not be political because people are so fucking divided, you know? Yeah. But, like, I, I had a friend. I have a friend who went to, a, like, a, a punk show in New Hampshire the other day. And me growing up going to, like, punk and hardcore shows in New Hampshire... If you were even slightly showing a sign that you were racist, right. you're getting the fuck beat out of you. Right. Like the, the legend always goes that like the biggest gangs per se in the, the hardcore scene in Boston were basically like enforcers who would keep anybody who was like, you know, a, a skinhead or a Nazi or whatever out. My friend sends me this photo of a dude in the mosh with a huge fucking swastika on his back, with shirt off in the pit. And I was just thinking, I'm like, damn. Like, that's fucked up. I posted my Instagram story, and I was shocked by the number of people who felt like they wanted to DM me to let me know that I was some sort of busybody 
for having an opinion about this guy voicing his opinion at a show. Like, like to me, that is just blatant, clear cut rule number one. If you come to any kind of music event and you got a swastika on you, I'm knocking your fucking teeth. Not, not, not me, but, you know, back in the day, that was the attitude, 100%. And they, and you, wait, but they, you said everybody was tripping on you? They, they, I just got a lot of DMs that it seemed to be like, like this sort of like whataboutism type thing. Like this sort of like moral relativism. Like nothing is wrong. Nothing is right. That guy just has an opinion. How dare you? have that opinion i'm like how are you actually following me and you don't feel strongly about this like well, think I, about how uncomfortable that makes so many people there no doubt man yeah i mean I, I i you know i think i'd like to think everybody would be either be like wow that's so fucked up just leave it alone just right. leave it alone you know yeah. and other people were like man let's take care of this shit man fuck that shit that's a blatant fucking flag in my face and i'm offended i'm handling this yeah. you know what i mean hey I agree with everybody. You know what I mean? If that's what people are thinking, you know, yeah. as long as they're not thinking something else, like leave them alone. That's no problem. You know. What I mean? Yeah, then, I was just shocked. Yeah, by that, you know. Bro. I mean, who don't? I mean, I, I would have been right there. Like if you like, I've been. It, there's been times when me and my friends are standing around, and one of the dude all of a sudden makes a racist comment. We just all look at each other like, what the fuck? Mm. And then just beat him down. You know what I mean? That was <laughs> when I was young. You know what I'm saying? Real? Yeah, man. I respect Stomp that. the fuck to the street. Probably twice that happened. I've seen in my life. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We, we, I mean, nobody in you know, our whole team is on that shit. You know what I mean? That's like, that, like I totally feel what you're saying. It almost should be a fucking crime. It's like a hate crime or something, right? Yeah. You sit there and have that on your back, you know? It's like, <sighs> it's offending as fuck, right? Yeah. And so that's why it's, I don't know why anybody's thinking. Yeah, I was shocked by that one. Yeah. Let me ask you this question just to pivot here. Uh, you're presumably going to have more time to put into the overall business of psychopathic records and stuff. Like, is is that your plan is to put more time into that? And, and what parts of that business are still exciting to you in terms of yeah. working with new artists, yeah. doing the, the festival, et cetera? I'm excited about Ouija Mac. Okay, because you last... were supposed to pull up with him, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he He's on tour, though. He had to take off. Oh, I, I know okay. he was leaving on tour, but he's on tour right now. And, um, man, I'm so inspired by him, man. He, he's a, he's a late, the last artist we signed, right? Right. And the most successful we've ever had. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that's awesome. What's, what year are you signed him? Um, like three years ago. Okay. Yeah. And, man, he just puts out fucking album after album mixtape you know just producing m mountains of music and his videos man he's, it's like he's got a new video every week wow you know it, it's at uh what is it at you, what is what's his uh thing Yeah, YouTube, yeah. YouTube.com slash Ouija Mac, like the Ouija board. And o U I J A. That's right. O U I J A and Mac is M A C C. Right. Check him out, man. I, I guarantee you, you'd be surprised. Ouija Mac is the fucking shit. And I'm so proud of him, you know what I mean? And we just leave him alone. We don't touch him. Really? We don't have any say in anything he does. He's a machine, man. Mm. He, he, I'm so proud of that motherfucker, man, for real. Like, he is a machine, and he's dope as fuck. And he, do, shit is do, so hot. Do you feel like he's really, like, carrying on the mantle of what the brand that you guys have built is all about? He's carrying it on not only to the old school Juggalos, but to a new generation. Mm. He's got a bunch of Ouija Mac fans that are learning about Juggalos. Cause wow. of course. I mean, probably he's 50-50. You wow. know what I mean? I mean, he's, he's doing really good. Right. And, and, and man... <laughs> It just feels good, man, because, yeah, you know, like anything, you go up and down, and we, 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 we've we lost a lot of money, you know what I mean, by signing artists, you know what I mean? Really? Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. That's yeah. been a big money loser. How so? Because, CDs, advance, because then... CDs dried up, you know, and we, uh, we were right there in the middle of that, you know what I mean? So you so, were signing artists on the basis of you were going to make money off the CDs, yeah. and then it took years and years before streaming really came in. Yeah, or, you know, before their CDs were selling really good, and then by the time they want to do a new album, CDs are not the thing anymore, mm. and we still are contracted to spend this much money or whatever on this dude, you know what I mean? Wow. Or whatever, you know, it just gets hard because... um. If, if the if yeah like the world changed CDs went away you know what I mean yeah what are we selling now you know what I mean that's what it, that's what it ha pretty much happened you know mm. yeah huh. but back in the day man when you were a, a local a local band you could just drive around to, in your neighborhood and go to record stores yeah. man we we, we were pulling out of there with fourteen hundred bucks two thousand mm. twenty five hundred you know just by me and Joey me and Shaggy going to uh, stores like in in probably two day in one weekend's worth you'd hit like. 18 stores right i mean they were fucking everywhere 
and it's just non-existent now except for <laughs> i love that because i talked to so many rappers who have these like fond memories of like i, I think hell rel i was talking to the other day where he was like an average day for me back then was get 2000 cds printed up throw them in the in the trunk and then yeah. i'm just driving around connecting with people in different places yep. pulling up on people barbershops selling <laughs> cds i'm like that sounds so cool and interactive in comparison to now where rappers are basically just trying to court fame that will then somehow convert to you know youtube views and, and apple plays and all this stuff <laughs> Yeah. It's such a less direct transaction, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, man. But uh, this good in today's world. It's so, look at a video. You can shoot a video for 5000 bucks now right. and have some bomb-ass video. Man, we used to spend 250 grand on a video that the label would. You know what right. I mean? And then fucking, uh, you know, we, the, the president would be like, I'm going to walk this in myself, you know? <laughs> and he'd go in. He'd tell us he's going to go in there and, and ask for a personal favor from the guy, and he's a friend or whatever. Anyway, they go in there, and MTV's like, you know what? We're going to take the pass option. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, and at that time, it's basically like the video barely exists. You're done, right? Yeah. You're done. There is nowhere to show the video. There was no YouTube, you know what I mean? People don't even know how YouTube got started. Yeah. It's because everybody's trying to see Janet Jackson's titty, <laughs> you know? And there was no YouTube. Right. So everybody was like, man, we need a YouTube. We need to see Janet Jackson's titty immediately. And yeah. I agreed. You know, that's how YouTube was born. You had to see those titties. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. You had to. Shout out Justin. Actually, Man. I think he became the villain in that whole situation, though. The Pleasure Principle video just ended the world for me. You lost a lot of kids to Janet Jackson music videos <laughs> in your life? <laughs> so many flushed. <laughs> so many flushed. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, what about the uh, the gathering of the juggalos? Are you going to have more time to put into that now? Do you have like a bigger vision or a different man, vision? Yeah, honestly, we got more time to do everything, man. I'm doing this. I'm doing a series, man. Check this out. This has never been done, all right? I'm doing a series of songs called Walking Home, all okay. right? And it's a story about me walking home through Southwest Detroit and through Delray and trying to make my way home in between the gangs and the, and the prostitutes and the drug dealers, you know what I mean, and right. all that shit. And um, so the first song is out right now is, is Walking Home Monday, mm -hmm. right? Then coming out next is Walking Home Tuesday, you know? And that one comes with a quarter, like 25% of, a, of the board game floor. So when you get Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, now you got the whole board game floor, you know, but you wait for the weekend off to get the pet, the pegs or whatever they're called, you know what I'm saying? Okay. The players. Anyway, so it's got, so the singles are going to be Walking Home Monday, that's out now. Walking Home Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Weekend Off is the conclusion to the whole story. Okay. And it's all, like, you know, when the one song happens, whatever happens in that song, like, if I, if I slapped a hooker on the ass, you know, in front of her pimp, you know, there's going to be whatever, you know, situation is going to be handled on the next version. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. on, on the next uh, uh, Walking Home Tuesday. And then whatever happens there leads into Walking Home Wednesday. So, so this is a solo story. project that yeah. you're talking about here? Yeah. Okay. And it's an ongoing story, you know, because I, I, I put out a record a long time ago called The Wizard of the Hood. And it's um, Wizard of Oz. It's, it's me walking through Wizard of Oz. But the whole, it's, it's like an EP. It's like seven songs. But they're all locked in together as almost one song you know i mean they're, they're each totally different right but um it's all the same story though it's like telling the story of the wizard of oz you know i meet the, i meet the scarecrow then i meet the tin man then i meet the lion you know and these are rappers we had shaggy playing um you know what i'm saying shaggy was a wizard actually you know uh -huh. but yeah you know we had all, all our rappers playing different characters in in the wizard of the hood and that was basically dorothy telling a story you know what i mean and people really like that that ep you know it's like it, uh, Juggalos really, really dig it. So I wanted to do something that competes with it, you know? Mm. So this Walking Home series has been really fucking cool, man. That's fine. It's been a lot of fun. And there's a lot of rappers in there, too, you know, in, this, in the song that are playing characters. Shaggy plays a character, and there's all kinds of people in the song, too, you know? Oh, yeah, that's Really it. cool. And, oh, and, and each issue comes with a comic book of, of that. Well, yeah, whatever you heard in the song, you can see it in the comic book, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, um, they I, all, I, I think I asked you about the gathering. Yeah, yeah. We did the gathering. I'm sorry. <laughs> you somehow sorry. pivoted to this oh, at some no, point. No. But <laughs> no, I just had to get the infomercial out. That was, oh, no, that was good. You know that was good. I like it, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we had the gathering, man. Nobody knew we were going to have it. We announced it at the last minute, and it was off the fucking hook, man. Mm. It really was. It was, man, we had the ICP's Bigfoot hunt. It was so fucking fun. And man, this, this was when? This was in late August. Oh, okay. So you were able to pull it off. Yeah. We yeah. fucking, and everybody came. How big was it size-wise compared to in the past? Because you know, it's it, tough we, with COVID. We, we, we would get like 6,000 or 7,000. 
I'd say there was 7,500 there easily. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe even eight. Nice. Like, it was so fucking jam-packed. Everything we did was so fun. And everybody had so much fun, man. And it was really fucking awesome. And my brother, who puts the whole thing together, you know, he pulled it off at the last second. We weren't even going to do it because of COVID. Then we seen all these other festivals coming up. And we're like, man, people are going to be mad if we don't do it. Right. So my brother just was, had a quick meeting with us and asked us if we're down. And then he just worked nonstop every night and day, night and day, night and day, putting it all together. And it jumped off without a hitch. Are you guys still booking all these like metal bands and like different old school rappers? Or man, did you we keep had, it more. We had Kid and Play there Ooh, this year. Nice. Yes. Man, we had we had so many, man. We had uh, Vanilla Ice came through. Right. We had Steve O was, was hosting uh, yeah. the, the main stage on Saturday night. Man, we had a lot of, you know, gangs of people, man. Vanilla Ice is a cool guy. He's my boy. Really? Yeah. Man, I think he, he made a deal with the devil because he looks exactly the fucking same. Really? Never changes. I was watching some shit about how Vanilla Ice basically got the like rawest deal in rap history in the sense that he was like a very respected, like cool ass dude who kind of got lampooned by the media and Saturday Night Live and shit. And that really like caused his public image to take a dip after Ice Ice Baby, but it wasn't really deserved. But they no. sort of like used him as their whipping boy at a certain point. It's a really well, interesting well, story. To he me. became a record label product like they had him mm. dancing, dan or they had him dressing like Hammer and, yeah. and you know, and, and doing all things that he didn't want to no and normally do, you know? Right. But man, what a humble dude. What a cool ass dude. We, we had that in common though. You know, being dissed on shit on by the press, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, all our lives, we're the most hated band in the world, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like that no more, though. It's right. so fucking crazy out here, man. It's just a, just a new generation out here. It's yeah. just different. But it, 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 we remember the old, though. You know, it, it's just crazy to think about you guys and how you're perceived publicly, that at a certain point, you were this, like, hated group of fucking white trash pieces of shit. And then somehow... Over the years, it pivots into being beloved white trash pieces of shit. Like, <laughs> isn't that so fascinating? I think, I think people respect that we survived, you know what I mean? Exactly. And we're still yes. here, you know, and untouched. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're here without a, without a, without a flake off, you know? Like, like, we're killing it. We've been killing it steady. Juggalos know we keep them entertained, man. Mm. It's such a fucking honor. You know, these people are so incredible. They're so fucking creative. You know, they had, like in the Juggalo world, there's all kinds of Juggalo selling, Juggalo wear, and custom made Juggalo things, and just all the shit to each other. It's so fucking fascinating to sit and watch because people think we created it. How the fuck did we create something like that, man? Right. That shit is organic. That shit happened, and we're just freaked out as everybody else, man. You ever feel like fucking the Grateful Dead or something, where like those bears, like people will be doing art with them or painting them on walls and all this shit, or like like think about what it must be like to be in fucking Metallica and you're walking down the street and you're just seeing fucking seven year old kids in Metallica shirts. Does it does it feel like that at a certain point? Like, you, like almost like you were a fucking Walt Disney. Like you created yeah. like all this intellectual property that is so big that you almost don't matter at anywhere near as much as this image or this thing. Like, yeah, yeah you're the guy no. who created it, but there's going to be kids who love Mickey Mouse forever who never going to give a fuck about Walt Disney. <laughs> you know what, though, man? Um, man, at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's about survival. I think people respect it. And, you know, our, our what, what do you call it? Our notoriety is fucking way bigger than our actual success. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, none of these people are coming to our concerts. Mm. None, none of these people are buying our CDs or, or buying our songs, you know? None, none of that is happening, you know? It's a situation where if they see us somewhere in public, they're, they're like, wow, that's really them. But they're in their zone. They're in their environment. They're not going to come to a concert at fucking 1.30 in the morning with 1,500 sweaty kids jamming together up on a stage. But, you know, right. but just, no way are they doing that, you know. But if they're sitting at a festival or something and ICP comes out on stage, they're like, whoa, that's really them. That's those clowns. Fuck yeah, they've been around forever. Yeah. You know, because and they're, and they're, they give it up now as opposed to back in the day. They were all like, just like, fuck you. Right. Every festival we played, there'd be like 600 to 1,000 juggalos right up front with painted faces, and the rest of the whole fucking 19,000 would just be like, I mean, I'm dead serious. Every person. Right. Or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking about right now, like 2004, 2005, I was sitting at Union Square in the middle of Manhattan on my bike. This is where all the BMXers and skateboarders were hanging out. And I had primarily done most of my ICP listening in like 97, 98 or so, that, that type of area of my life. So now fast forward 2005 and we're sitting there 
and there's an uh, ICP show in Jersey, I believe. So, like, the train gets off. It's late at night. And these are all kids who are coming back from the ICP show, getting off the train. And I'm not going to lie. I was, like, the, the vibe of everybody looking at all these Juggalo fans. It was, one, it was hard to believe that we we're seeing it in real life. Because in the middle of Manhattan, like, you're used to seeing them at the ICP shows. You're not thinking that you're going to see them in real life. And yeah, I mean, like the the, the way that the, the crowd sort of, of people sort of regarded them, I wish I could like go back and like relive just the way that that felt. But there there was definitely an extent like you guys really you do feel slash the energy. Did. You, you speak it. for the fucking outcast for sure because those dudes that we're seeing walk by and women, they're like they didn't give a fuck about what anybody thought scrub about life, them in man. that minute. Scrub life, that's scrub life. Yeah, you know that's what we holler, man. Uh, Shaggy's got it tatted on his stomach. You know what I mean? I'm getting scrub life on my forehead tomorrow. You Ooh, know, I like scrub it. life is is you know the motto. You know, freedom. Be you, man. Be you, or be a clown. Who gives a fuck? If a clown slips on a banana peel and busts his ass, he's a clown. Mm. Everybody's, everybody's expecting it. Leave him alone. <laughs> I mean, just so much shit in rap glorifies you know wealth and and status and like you know it's important. I think at a certain point that there has to be a voice that says like you're you're a regular guy with a regular job and you're into some weird music and shit like. It's okay, like you know, you just the, somebody has to speak for that. And you know, man, the, there's a documentary coming out too, man. I want to let you know about. It's coming out. Um, it's called uh, "United States of Insanity." Okay. And it's all about the fucking FBI when they when they labeled Juggalos a gang. Wow. You know what I mean? We talked about it before, and, and um, yeah, man. And uh, the mo the documentary is all about it. You know, pretty much captures everything I filmed, the march on Washington, and all that shit. You know what I mean? Nice. We, we schooled that shit, man. That's and dope. Because that's one thing I was thinking is like the ICP legacy. At some point, it needs to be told in a way that's concise and, and well done for future generations. You know, because like yeah, as, as about, time goes by, these kids get harder and harder to like. You know, really teach them shit. You know, yeah. but <laughs> I want to like. You know, it would be it would be dope for me to be able to tell my friends who don't necessarily understand ICP to be like, watch this fucking documentary and you'll get it. Yeah. Well, the, the documentary is more about you know. The FBI thing, and, and less less about the band, but that's okay. that's that's a that's a good thing, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what's important. You know but what I mean? think it's important to like just seize onto the best narrative, and then like allow that to also tell the story, kind of. You know? You know? Yeah. That's the thing about ICP, man. Is you might hear one song and think, man, I could never like those motherfuckers. But that's the thing about ICP is our songs. Are, uh, you know, we try to make our songs so different from each other. Right. You know, and, and so you know, there's no, we don't have any boundaries on what we'll do. Right. You know what I mean? We might put something really soft out, like Moments of Love by, by uh, you know, and, and, or something, you know, really so soft song. You know, we'll do that shit. We love that shit. We might do acoustic. And we might do a metal-ass song with guitars. We might do a straight fucking death pop. It's pop, but it's death pop. Mm. You know, we would do, we'd do a death pop song, you know, just straight up sounds like it's a pop record, you know? Right. We do all that shit, man. We love it. Music is the fucking shit. <laughs> I respect it. Hey, I wanted to ask you about this thing, though, is that there was this sort of a viral controversy where basically Shaggy was on another podcast without you, and he they were at, he was asked to review a guy who had uh, actual clown tattoos on his face, and it, it was his paint, like, tattooed onto the guy's face. The guy was making all these videos, I guess, being sort of regretful about it. And Shaggy's whole, like, demeanor was basically kind of like, you dumb fuck. Like, what the hell were you thinking? Oh, man. Did, did you see this? And no. like, oh, you didn't see it. Okay. No, I haven't heard anything about I that. I felt like it was sort of like a, a bigger I, thing. I think I did hear something about it. But some, somebody said he was getting controversy. But you know what? He, he probably just made a mistake and said something dumb. You know what I mean? He was just sort of like joking on the guy. Like, yeah. the, the guy's sitting there making a TikTok talking about how he regretted doing this. Listen, let me be honest, man. When, when, when we do meet and greets, man, sometimes it can be the hardest thing in the fucking world, man, all right? Because people come up, and sometimes people will just drop a megaton bomb on you. They'll be like, what's <laughs> yeah. up, Jay, man? Um, my, I just want you to know, man, my daughter died two years ago yesterday. Yeah. You know, and, and, just, and you're just standing there, like, you don't know what the fuck they say. You know, or a yeah. kid might come up, pull his shirt off, his, his whole fucking back is tatted out, right? Right. And he's looking at you. What are you going to do? Yeah. What, what the fuck do you say? And if you if you have one or two people that are like that, maybe you can you can handle it. But when you have a hundred people in a row yeah. that are kind of like some good percentage of them are kind of unloading their trauma on you, I've been in that position, and it's like I don't know if I can do meet and greets because it feels like it's emotionally overwhelming. It sometimes. is, brother. It is. You know, you're exactly right. And that's what, another thing, man. The masses are always right. Listen, mm. just being a celebrity, you know. Listen. 
honestly, the masses are always right. Like, there's a lot of unfair shit that happens with celebrities in their life. You know, celebrities can be very lonely, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and, and a lot of them are in trouble like that, you know what I mean? And, and man, 100%, you know, it don't matter because the, the masses are always right, you know? Right. Like, if you know, you should never be a dick in public. It's your job, you're a celebrity, you know what I mean? No matter what kind of mood you're in, you know, all, the, all that shit is scary. Mm. I feel bad for, for Joey that that happened, man, that, that he's getting heat on that. But, um... Everybody knows Joey ain't like that, man. Yeah. We every day, every fucking day we're together. Okay. This honest to God truth. I'm not lying. I put this on everything I love. Every day we're together, there's at least one point where we're like, can you believe this shit, bro? Like, look, look <laughs> what we're doing. Look right. what we do for a living, dog. Look how hard we've been killing this. You know what I mean? And what I'm trying to say is, our lives are always overwhelming. You know what I mean? Mm. He's overwhelmed by that. He probably said something dumb. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody knows Joey's got nothing but love, man. 100%. You know what I mean? He does in his heart, man. Everybody knows that. That, that sucks that they're figuring out him for that. He probably just, yeah, man, that's that's how quick it can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sucks, man. I feel you. I wanted to ask this question. What what year was peak Juggalo fandom? Like, like what year would you maybe have, like, sold the most tickets? Or was, was it the most out of control? You know, probably 98, 99. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, um, we had the great Malenko with, you know, double platinum. Because that's when you got all the, the real controversy and you were, you were on TV every day and shit, yeah. Yeah, you know, they, they, they ran a, you know, I remember they ran a, um, the, the record company, Jive, bought a, um, a slot, that, like a, a chair, MTV uh, cha charitied off, you know, a slot, like an hour worth of television. Right. But they sold it as a, it's a charity, you know what I mean? The money went to charity. So Island or Jive Records bought the the time right, and with that hour on MTV, they chose to air a documentary on ICP called Shockumentary, right? Okay. And every time they went to a commercial, the the guy boys from MTV, he was like, the, "This hour was auctioned off for the da 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 charity, and this is how Jive Records chose to spend their money." <laughs> I swear to God, and everybody seeing us get shit on like that, mm. everybody was like. That must be good shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they fucking bought it. And that week, we, we fucking went from like 4,000 sales to fucking 50,000 something that week on SoundScan. Right. Because of that, because of that one MTV bump. 50,000 right. motherfuckers went out and bought it. You know, so that was like a big thing for us, that that documentary, Aaron, you know? Right. Because they, they really tried to shit on it, but all it did was make it sound like it's some really heavy shit, you know? And yeah. it is exactly that. It's so funny when I think back to the 90s, how they're, they're like, like I, I've listened to Cannibal Corpse a decent amount. You know, I'm not like a big death metal guy, but I've listened to Cannibal Corpse a good amount. Why? Because Tipper Gore took a stand against Cannibal See? Corpse because she needed like some white shit to kind of balance out the <laughs> fact that she was coming at NWA and shit, <laughs> you know? And so Cannibal Corpse, boom, they become like this legendary death metal band. I like, didn't know that about them. Largely because of the fact that the media tried to sort of cancel them, you know? Okay, wow. And I, I mean, I always kind of ponder how interesting that is that you guys having this one I mean, at the time it might have even seemed like it was kind of a, a mess and that it could be kind of like this defining moment that sort of introduced the world to you guys you know yeah man i mean th there was definitely that was the uh felt like you know when things really really turned on and it feels like they never turned off you know yeah. Be because we're, we're, we live in that world you know what i'm saying like like when we realized you know we're not good on these festivals and everything we're not getting any love we just sort of burrowed our own tunnel you know mm. and we've been living in there burning our way through the underground for like the last you know, 15, 20 years, honestly. Mm. And then we came up, and it's like a different world now. Everybody's right. like, you know, it is honestly like that. Everybody's like, man, respect, man. You know, we're like, yeah, that's dope, you know? Yeah. Like, we love making friends, man. We're all, we're all about not being hated, man. That's a good feeling. That's dope. You know? Yeah, so de describe the feeling of playing a sold-out show to the Juggalos, like a hardcore show in one of the cities that you guys have been playing for all these years versus you get offered a good amount of money to hop on a plane and you guys go play some festival somewhere and you know like 90 percent of the audience is not there for you and maybe you do have some fans there but it's not your hardcore fans like how, how different does it feel going out there on stage um i'd say you know they feel the same when you're actually on stage you know performing you know it is very much a unforgettable you know it just is what it is you know what i mean mm -hmm. it can't be replaced there's nothing ever get that exciting or anything but um yeah man I, any any kind of performance was always, 
you know, super important and, and hella good feeling, felt great, you know. But the, the thing is, um, around Die Hard Juggalos, they want you to do rare songs and, and mm. songs like that. And I fuck up lyrics sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Bad. And you're just staring at it when you fuck your lyrics up, you know. It's no, I don't know what kind of face to make, you know. It's awful. You That's know interesting saying? that you're even conscious of that because I feel like I know so many rappers who basically go on stage and don't rap half the fucking... Oh, I know. <laughs> it don't even matter. They just play the song. Yeah. I know. What's up with that? Yeah. I mean, at least do the lyrics. Yeah. You know, for real, man. Hey, we got to check that, man. And that, so so consistently when an artist does come out and raps without a backing track, I mean, people love it. People are wowed by it. People fucking look at someone like Currency and they're like, he's fucking amazing because he can do that. Yeah, without a, without a, without the backing vote. Yeah, wow. he comes out and he raps Good. his whole shit. But then, then he's changing shit. He's oh yeah, it's, it's shit amazing because you yeah. really you really feel like you're watching like a technician. Like holy fuck, he just killed that shit. Like that wow. that's really impressive. Whereas you know, rapping over your own song is right. Yeah, exactly, it's easy. I mean, especially when you're not even doing it though. <laughs> yeah, you just let it go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Man, I remember when we signed Ouija Mac mm. and brought him on our tour. He was doing that, and he was like, "Man, you don't understand." And we were like, "You don't understand." If you do like that in front of Jones, they're not gonna mm. dig it. They're not used to that, you know. And sure enough, he found out the hard way. But he, but he jumped right down his craft and did it. You know? Did you know that that was one of the defining things in the battle between the locks and uh, and and uh, the diplomats that they recently did? They did one of them versus battles. Yeah, yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, but but Jada Kiss and them were rapping without the backing track. And Cameron and them were rapping with the back and track. And J Jada starts saying, they cheating. They yeah. cheating. These oh, motherfuckers my God. Cheating. And the crowd got on their side so hard because it was so much more impressive seeing Jada. And them. That's the thing yeah. about that show, man. Everybody performs it just like they do in concert. Mm. So, you know, I mean, you can get away with things in a concert. But when you're in on, on a televised, you know, or, or fucking something like that where the cameras are all in on you. You got to do the fucking lyrics. You know what I mean? Who who would you guys battle in a hypothetical versus battle? Oh, man. Because we don't got to go to versus. We can just do it ourselves. We'll put it on. But we who, battle, we, who we, would it be? We battle Isham. Mm. Isham the Unholy. Yeah. Yeah, that's who was our big inspiration when we started out, man. He And he's one of my dear friends today. Mm. And he's a legend in Detroit, in Michigan. He's a fucking legend. You know what I mean? Isham, when, when you used to play his music, the sky would turn red. Right. For real, I mean, he would rap about the devil and shit, and the fucking sky would turn a, a almost red, scary man. <laughs> that, I that, love you, that definitely would be a good one. But in terms of selling a lot of tickets, I think we're gonna have to have you guys going at M and D twelve on stage. I Boom! Was say, there we go. I was gonna say, might be a little optimistic, but let's go. No, think about that war for a minute. Think about it for a minute. Hold on, hold yeah. on. Think how fucking dope that would be, man. Right? Think about it. He's coming with these hits that were monster hits, but we're dropping. Dope shit, undeniably, that people had never heard. You mm. know what I mean? It would be one of the greatest visual Because we would bring our best. all time. We would bring our best, you know? You'd walk so, up and flick Bizarre in his belly. <laughs> That's my boy, though. <laughs> That's my boy. Yeah, and, yeah shout him out and, Bizarre. He, him and King, yeah, shout out Bizarre and, and King Gordy. Shout out King Gordy, too, man. King, him and King Gordy do, do music together, man. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, but fuck yeah, man. I was going to say that. M, fuck that. You know what I mean? I mean, who else do you want to go up against but the best? You know what I'm saying? It sucks that his career has gone so well because if he had kind of like fallen off at some point, then he might he might be more like ah, I, you know. that's what I. Yeah, oh, you mean as for, for yeah, to do it? He's so big that okay, it's, he well, doesn't have to do anything. Well, he let's want say to this. Do, you know? Let's say this. How about this? And, and, and we have no problem with him. Like it, mm. everything is super cool. Been super cool. Been been super cool. You know what I mean? But. For the sake, the sake of some freshness from Detroit, I officially challenge Eminem. Ooh. Right now, no jumper. Eminem, bring it. Let's do it versus battle. Mm -hmm. Megaton, huge hits versus undeniable underground, unheard but dope shit. You know what I mean? Back and forth. Oh! He can't be coming in doing the songs with Rihanna hooks on him and shit. We gotta go old school. He can come in any way he wants. <laughs> he can bring it. Hey, hey, man, nothing to it but to do it. You're right. Yeah, man. Sure. That'd be so dope, though, right? 100%. Fuck yeah, man. That'd be awesome. You know what's coming? That's why I'm challenging him, man. Officially, make that official Eminem, man. Bring it. Let's do it. Let's battle in, in deep for Detroit. You know, Detroit versus everybody. First, us versus you. Let's do it to it. 100%. 100%. What about the fact that? The guy from Smash Mouth is retiring from the band <laughs> at the same time that you guys are deciding to take a, a, a step a away. Because it's always <laughs> been rumored that you are the guy from Smash Mouth. Or 
Fucking that guy, Guy Fieri, is that his name? The cook? Fieri, the yes. Oh, yeah, you're definitely him. No, yeah. I met him. You guys are I'm all now. these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I get that a lot about the guy from Smash Mouth. I wonder if he gets it, too. You kind of suspicious. <laughs> but you guys might be both taking a step back at the same time. He's dope, though. They're dope. I like them, man. Yeah, but I guess he's got health, health issues, or he went on some weird rant the other day on stage, so oh, he decided to sucks. take a step back. But I think the band's going to still tour with a different singer, which... Uh, I'm, a I'm, new I'm, singer? I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming... Assuming that's not an option for you guys. Hey man, Allison Chains pulled it off, man. This thing is great, man. And, right. and, and they let you know, and they had a great. So it's it's tough, man. But they did a lot of bands like Misfits, shit like that. But I don't know. Yep. Don't yeah, you feel like too. you guys are so individual and like important to it? That if it, one of us was gone, it's just not happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're equally. We're just man. We there's two of us, and there's not a lot of groups like that. Simon and Garfunkel. Mm. You know, like think about it. The, the, uh, you know, I remember a rap group called Twin Hype. They were twins. Mm. Do it, do it, do it. They were the shit, man. I remember, um, like, do you know, as far as duos, you know, oh shit, those guys that uh, um, over in Europe, they hit mad hard. What is their name, man? Uh, uh, what the fuck? I can't remember his name. Hmm. Anyway, these guys, it's it's a black dude and a white dude, and um, they're really big in Europe. You know, they get over really, really big out there, and they're respectable rappers here. You know, I'm trying hmm. to remember their name. Anyway, yeah, man, there's not a lot of duos out there. You know hmm. what I mean? That I can think of. It's interesting. Um, okay, so what do you got coming out that you want to tell the world about? What uh, Anything that we need to know? Yeah, man, we got the brand new album coming out on Halloween. Hell yeah. You can download that shit somewhere, and I guarantee you, you're going to find something you like, man. Promise. It's a good record. I think it is. It's called, it's called Yum Yum Bedlam. Mm. And it's the fifth Joker's card of Deck 2. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's pretty deep. So, yeah, man, we're happy. That comes out on um, officially Devil's Night, which is uh, October 30th in Detroit, the nice. night before Halloween. And uh, that's when the album comes out right at midnight. It's going to be dope. I just thought of this all the top of my head, but have you ever seen, there, there's a YouTube video I just saw the other day. I used to go get my hair cut at this barber shop, right? And there was another barber there who had his face fully tattooed like a clown. And he would be cutting hair in there on some regular shit. The other day I noticed there was a YouTube video about him that had like a million views. Wow. Basically like a profile of him and... I mean, his his attitude is basically like, I got my face tattooed because I am a clown. Like, I'm I'm serious about this life. Like, this is this is what I'm into. I can relate to that. I you know like, what that's I mean? Dope. I, I I like being a clown. I mean, we're here to entertain. You know, mm. one way or another. You know what I mean? I love. I'm so fucking honored to be able to entertain these people, man. These these wonderful people that have like, you know, supported us in, in our life, man. It just gets, man, really starting to fucking. Man, it's hard not to well up, man, thinking about that shit, man. But for real, man, it's been a long ride. You know what I mean? And it's been a great one, man. Right. That's what I say, you know. I told Danny I told Danny Brown this, man, I, when, once I, when I met him, I said, hey, man, enjoy this shit, man, really, because, man, you can only be new once, mm. you know. And that's a fucked up thing to say, you know, because it may be true you can only be new once. But you know what? We avoided being old school our whole career. We were scared to death of being labeled old school. You mm. know what I mean? And when it finally happened, it's been the most rewarding, fucking awesome time of our career, man. And I'm so surprised by that and so shocked. You know That's what I mean? That's amazing. Like these days, easily the most enjoyable days of our entire career. And it's, you know, we're also the more successful right now than yeah. we've ever been. And getting the respect you deserve in a lot of ways as well, I think. Our, our Halloween concert, Hollow Wicked sold out 10 hours you know we've never done that right you know what i mean like like we're, we're, we're doing like really good right now and we're, we were like we had we were like number two on tiktok last week really yeah number two what song for the chop chop slide oh i gotta see that and that just happened randomly i'm assuming you don't have a a, 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 TikTok? a network sort of planting these tiktoks <laughs> or anything ouija told me really? he sent me over the chart yeah and um yeah it, and we started looking at it, me and my girl it's it's like they're all doing same thing as a clown check you remember that yeah yeah they're doing the same type of thing but um they're, they're dancing to, to the song shop shop slide and that's what's cool is because our music is perfect for that shit. Mm. if you want to make a funny video of yourself modeling the words to a song I see beans of shit. It's wow. a good catalog for that shit. You know I what I mean? I gotta check that out. We might have to do that dance. <laughs> Gina? We dancing. All right. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, man. Amazing to check in with you. Very glad to hear that you're uh, transitioning well into a sort of slightly different era in you guys' career. But I am, man. Yeah, everybody's good. You know, everybody's good. Shaggy's great. You know what I mean? Everything is great, man. We're, we're, we're both, you know, very happy to still be here. Fucking kicking ass. And our shit is hard, man. Mm. Our shit is fucking seriously hard. Listen to it. It's good shit. Get the new shit. Turn the Spotify up. Turn the Apple Music up. Go buy a fucking T-shirt. That's right. Do Let's it. Let's go. All day. 
I love you, brother. I appreciate you. Much love, dog. Appreciate you, too. Thank you, Legend. Man. I can't believe I consider this guy a fucking friend at this point in my life. What the <laughs> hell happened? Hell yeah, man. Life's good like that. Let's go. Violent J, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Patreon, OnlyFans, all that shit. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all.